going to bring in Jeff Kulikowski. Jeff, you covered the first trial right. where Newlander was found guilty. Uh, I'm kind of surprised at how quickly the jury reached a decision because deliberations started at 9 o'clock this morning. Right. There was only one time that they asked for some clarification. Mm -hmm. Usually you see a jury, you know, ask and, for readback of testimony. We and, didn't see that in this and, case. And fa in fact, we're in an hour lunch break uh, today as well, so you have right. to figure they're probably deliberating for approximately six or seven hours first time around back in 2015. I know I'm not in the light. We're, we're kind of flying <laughs> by the seat of our pants here a little bit, but um, they took uh, over three days, um, uh, three and in, mm -hmm. into the morning of the uh, of the fourth day before they returned a verdict there. So uh, clearly the, the jury in this case, I believe it was uh, eight men, four women, um, decided that the evidence that the prosecutor, Bill Fitzpatrick, and his team presented was overwhelmingly enough uh, that they really had made up their right. minds. And let's uh, talk once about that one there. piece of yeah. evidence that was different this time around. It was that piece of brain right. matter right. that they claimed was yep. on the bed. Yeah, that Leslie. was kind of the, I, I guess you could call right. it the explosive new piece of right. evidence um, in this case, which would indicate. Um, and there were several uh, forensic experts, uh, both on the prosecution side and even a couple on the defense's side, that did say that that was likely brain tissue from Leslie Newlander. There right. was one on the defense side that contradicted that, but right. it seemed to be enough to uh, sway them that clearly there was some kind of physical confrontation between the two of them and that piece of... Right. Uh, her head was... Right. was yeah, because the defense yeah. had claimed that she had slipped in the mm -hmm. shower. Right. So obviously the jury didn't buy that mm -hmm. this time around. Also, yeah. a difference here is Jenna Newlander didn't testify right. where the first trial, we did see her testify. That right. could have made a difference. I mean, you can you can Monday morning quarterback this, um, you know, uh, as long as you really want. Um, as we see, I'm guessing these are pictures from uh, earlier in the week, maybe even earlier today of, uh, of, of Robert, his son Ari there. There is uh, Jenna as well. Um, you know, do you call Jenna? Do you not call Jenna? Um, the first time around when I spoke to Bill Fitzpatrick after the first case, um, he said that there were, you know, some inconsistencies and just some flat out falsehoods um, from Jenna Newlander. And she was the only other eyewitness besides her father, Bob, in the house uh, that day. And neither one of them were called to the stand. Right. Um, and that was a calculated risk that the defense took yeah. that she may end up doing more harm under cross-examination mm -hmm. uh, than she would do good by being on there. And clearly they didn't want um, you know, Robert Newlander on the stand for probably the very same reasons. Did the jury take that into consideration? They were told that she did not testify and you could hold that against them. You could treat that as a negative factor in this case. And I'm sure that was, was one of the things that they uh, considered when they deliberated there, uh, right. the evidence. And he has been free on bail mm -hmm. up until now. Right, right. right. And you know, uh, and remember again, I mean, in that, that first trial, and I think even um, some of the appellate judges uh, had said that um, we're not overturning this case based on evidence. We're overturning this case based on juror misconduct. Right. So the first jury seemed to have, uh, in the eyes of the judges, based on the evidence, gotten it right. Um, which would lead you to believe that it wasn't as big a surprise the second time around that he would also be found uh, right. guilty as well. Yeah, so, and again, they started deliberating at around 9 this morning. Approximately, yep. Right, so. Broke around 12.30 for yeah. lunch, had an hour lunch there. I mean, I'm trying to do some yeah. quick math. It's, it's been a while speed for me. for this verdict, yeah. Yeah, it seems like they, they got into the room and they, they knew pretty uh, definitively mm -hmm. uh, which way they were leaning. Again, you want to quarterback this? Yeah, um, you, you know, never want to uh, second guess what a jury is thinking. And, and you yeah. don't know when the attorneys will likely right. have a chance to talk to them right. afterwards um, mm -hmm. and and kind of determine what worked, what didn't work. Um, yeah. But, you know, the other thing is is that we right. discussed Okay. There was a three-hour closer. Um, Jeff, we're gonna, we're gonna. There was a three. There was a three-hour closer um, by the defense. Right. Was it too much? Did they protest right. too much? Did he lose the jury? Um, or was it by that point the evidence just so right. overwhelming from the, from the prosecution's team that um, there were right. there was just too much to go the other way? And it, as for this case itself, Jeff, I'd like you to talk about this. Um, you know, we've covered a lot of trials over the years. 
this one has gotten incredible amount of attention yeah. just kind of these captivated were, all of sudden. Right. I mean these were what did you think about what prominent. he did for an occupation yeah, too. they were incredible delivered mean, babies I, I mean as I, yeah. I think I told Andrew Donovan on Newsmakers um, a few weeks back before this case I said you could probably walk down the street and find out of every 10 people you pass five or six of them either were delivered by Robert Newlander or right. had somebody that delivered yeah. um, you know, a family member mm -hmm. or something like that. And Leslie was incredibly prominent yes. in, in her philanthropy in the right. community, especially in the Jewish community, both of them. They were very well known, fairly high profile. Um, and the thought of this happening in their million dollar home in DeWitt, I think was shocking to a lot of people. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's garnered a lot of attention, absolutely. Yeah, um, um, and again, we're just waiting for Andrew Donovan. Mm -hmm. He will um, give us the jury's reaction and also, um, you know, family members, obviously. Yeah. I think Jenna was in the courtroom with her father when the verdict came in. And, so. I, and I can tell you, I mean, we'll, we'll hear from Andrew what it was like, but I remember the um, uh, that first case, um, just the the tension in the room. And, uh, you know, even for me uh, as a veteran uh, reporter, even at that time, um, just the nervousness of, of waiting. Everybody yeah. was on pins and needles sure. waiting to see what that verdict was like. I can only imagine um, what it was like in there. I mean, this is, probably the last time we'll see Robert Newlander a free man. Right. He will be taken be into in custody yeah. in handcuffs. He'll be led out of here just the way this uh, courthouse is configured mm -hmm. compared to the normal criminal right. courthouse where you're you're taken away into mm -hmm. kind of back hallways here. There's kind of no back hallways in the what we consider the old courthouse. I think it's now right. the civil courthouse, but they did it for pandemic reasons. Um, so yeah, he'll walk out right. in, in handcuffs and That's likely it. the next time we'll see him will be uh, at sentencing and when he'll be back in in jail close mm -hmm. uh, sentencing uh, right now set for April, April 11th, 11th. Yeah. Um, so so okay. we'll see um, looks like we do have right. live yeah. pictures yeah. right now mm -hmm. Yep, being walked out. You can see by sheriff's deputies right there, as we mentioned, uh, in handcuffs. Quite a few people uh, following him off. And this is the old Onondaga County mm -hmm. Courthouse. Um, and they Into needed the elevator. Right. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, they needed that extra space. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID concerns, right. obviously. Right. Um, and again, we're waiting for reaction. We're going to hear from Bill Fitzpatrick, I'm sure. Yep, we'll have plenty to point. say about this. Yeah. Um, also, the defense attorneys from New York City. Right, right, right. right. Quite, a, quite a team of them. Yeah. Fairly high profile. They've handled some bigger cases um, in their day, and I'm, I'm sure that they thought they had enough there uh, to, again, you know, in this case, all they have to plant is that, that small little seed of reasonable doubt. Now, I, I'm, I'm trying to get caught up, both my, my phone's buzzing like crazy, stuff in our ear, so clearly guilty on, on the murder charge. Mm -hmm. There was also a second charge in there of, of tampering with evidence, okay. and that, that is uh, moving the body um, and also uh, disposing of the bedding, the the sheets that right. um, were never right. found and uh, as well. Let's explain so that because she, if she slipped and fell in the shower, right. then you would have to try you to explain. You weren't tampering with any evidence, exactly. right? It's an accident right. and you're trying to give her care. But right. because it becomes a murder, likely right. I'm guessing, and again with the speed mm -hmm. of the, the verdict, mm -hmm. and, and I'm hearing now Gu guilty right. on both charges, right. which would make sense right. again with the speed that the jury came back with this, that they didn't struggle on anything. Like you said, we often hear, you know, a question, um, how does the law read in right. this case but but many times they'll nothing. ask for testimony to yep. be read back yep. to them yep. but that did not happen the only thing case. they asked for was to see the powerpoints right. from the closing arguments from the attorneys now those are not if you want to get into legalese of things those are not evidence and all the jury is allowed mm -hmm. to have in the room with them is things that were presented into evidence right. they can have testimony read back to them um, I'm not sure that they wanted three hours plus bills, mm -hmm. approximately half hour of, of testimony all read back to them. Right. So um, I think that was enough. And, and here you see uh, the, the verdict here, both on murder in the second degree, guilty, tampering with physical evidence, guilty. Right. Um, we know the first time around he was facing 25 uh, to life. He did actually mm -hmm. three years in Elmira uh, State Prison uh, before he was able to get that uh, verdict overturned and, and get out. So. What will the sentence be come April 11th? We'll, we'll see. I, I, I forgive me if I don't remember exactly how old um, Robert Newlander is He's now. He's 70. 70. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, let's let's say he he gets uh, three years of the credit on that, and you do maybe a 22 to life or something like that. 
I mean, right. even if he f finishes out that most minimum of terms, right. that's... He'll be very old by the time... person he... is not kind yeah. to no. people, and especially right. older people. It's, it's difficult on them. I got a question for you. Are you surprised he did not take the stand? No, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not, because he didn't in the, in the first case, right. and I think that he had already boxed them into a corner. I was very curious to see what they were going to do right. with Jenna, um, because she clearly, um, the prosecutors felt, and treated her very delicately, mm -hmm. and afterwards said, she's been through enough, we're not going to go after her, and could have charged her with lying sure. on the stand. Yeah. Um, but they said she's been through enough, she's yeah. lost her mom, her dad's gone to prison. Right, and we're you wonder done. if the jury was asking too, if it happened as the way he said mm -hmm. it did, yep. that she had vertigo, right. it was an accident, she slipped and fell in the shower, why wouldn't you go on the stand and mm -hmm. share that? with us, right? Right. I, I, and, yeah. and again, I mean, this was a, you know, a calculated move by the defense. And I'm sure, you know, uh, Bill Fitzpatrick and his team, you know, knew that this was a possibility. She may not testify. So what do we do? We have that um, key witness not called to the stand uh, charge, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the proper terminology, right. but that can be presented to the jury of do know that one of the only mm -hmm. other people that witnessed what went on was not called to the set. Um, there's, uh, there he is uh, being let out in, in the handcuffs, Robert yeah. Newlander, um, for the second time now, right. uh, convicted of murdering his wife Leslie in their home back mm -hmm. in, in 2012. And we remember right. just how, how, how fantastic this whole story has been right. in that it was originally ruled an accident, a mm -hmm. slip and fall. Former medical examiner, good friend of Leslie's, comes in, says, you need to relook at this. They relook at it. It's ruled now a homicide. Right. Um, he's brought into court. He's found guilty. It serves time. It's overturned. Right. Juror misconduct. I mean, it has been... Really? He almost got away with murder, you could say. Uh, yeah. I think absolutely you could say that, yeah. yeah. Um, so now he has uh, gone back into the Justice Center, I'm sure, probably where he'll stay for the time being, I imagine, until his his sentencing on uh, April 11th in Onondaga County Court. It will be um, uh, somewhat up to, to, to Judge Miller to determine exactly. I'm sure the, uh, the prosecutors will want to right. uh, give him the maximum. time in Elmira, three, right? About, approximately, uh, yeah. I'm going to say, three years right. um, in, in Elmira prison. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, probably right. maybe uh, right. uh, factored into it. we're going to go it. live right now to uh, District Attorney Bill okay. Fitzpatrick uh, prosecuting this case and successful for a second know. time. Let's listen in. I'll say this, he, he had a outstanding legal defense team, uh, very, very classy and ethical individuals, so I don't think there's anybody, you know, going to look back and say, geez, he didn't get a good, he didn't get a fair shot in this town or anything. And, um, you know, I'm just proud of my team, proud of my ADAs over here, uh, could not have done it without them. What does the quick verdict mean in terms of how you were able to convince the jury? Well, you know, man, I, I, or Andrew, I think the, uh, I, if you just look at that scene, you know, people, he, if people read about it, it's, it's tough for, you know, Doug doing it in the paper because he, he, he has to try to describe it. But when you see it, when you see the physical evidence and you see the carnage and the last thing in the mind, that comes to you is slip and fall in the shower. And I don't know what analysis the jury used, but uh, I, I used the phrase from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, whenever you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, has to be true. And that's true in this case. It's not a slip and fall in the shower. And once that possibility is eliminated, then the only thing left is homicide. Sure, there's a lot of questions, you know, what did he use? Where did he dispose of the evidence? You know, possibly in Green Lakes, that that would be my theory, because he said he went to Green Lakes, and that would explain if somebody saw him there. So, and, and you know, it's a sad day. This, this, this man ruined uh, a family, his own family. He made uh, Jenna uh, victim number two in the case. And, uh, you know, the irony is that uh, Jenna, in her efforts to absolve him, hurt him so badly in the first trial 
that, as you all know, they chose not even to call her in the second trial, and that, and that hurt him again, and that's the way it should be. In your closing arguments, you ended with, it's time for the people to speak for Leslie Newlander. Do you feel that that has happened with I this guilty verdict? I certainly do. I certainly do. These 12 people uh, spoke for Leslie, even for her own family won't. And good, good for them. Good for the jury. The defense says that they're going to be in an appeal process. What do you have to say to that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The defense says they're going to appeal. Well, they, they, what they've got one of the best appellate lawyers in the nation on their team. I wouldn't expect them to say anything else. Do you worry about an appeal, though? You've already the, a previous conviction yeah, has been worried, overturned. I, I'm worried one juror might have ran into a friend and said that she was impartial, and that might result in a new verdict. But don't get me in trouble with uh, any judges or anything. You, you had a question. Just looking to see why you yourself didn't call Jenna Newlander. Well, there, there's a rule that a prosecutor has to vouch for the credibility of his witness before he or she can put that witness on the stand. It's unethical to do otherwise. And I'm, look, Jenna suffered enough. I'm not going to throw any verbal bombs at her, but obviously it was my judgment that her testimony at the first trial was not truthful. And therefore, ethically, I could not possibly call it at the second trial. At the, after, when we were all talking like this after the first conviction, you said there's so much more about Robert Newlander that people don't oh, know. Oh, there really are. You wouldn't believe the people that come up to me after the verdict and say, I didn't want to tell the police this. You know, business partners that he's had, uh, uh, you know, the, the, his unfaithfulness to, uh, to Leslie, his financial problems and difficulties. Uh, he's just, he's just not a, a good guy. Uh, I mean, this was, admittedly, this was the worst he'd ever done, but it, he, he is just not, uh, and it's, it, it's hard to picture that because he's a man who brought life into the world so many times. So. Did he have his family fooled? Oh, I don't want to, they, they've suffered enough. I, they, they don't, they don't do, you think, do you think the piece of what you say is Leslie Newlander's head on the, the couple's bedroom headboard, do you think that was a, that, that new evidence really made it sink into the jury that this is what the verdict should be? Well, I certainly would think so. Uh, you, you can explain the blood with all kinds of hypotheticals and all kinds of theories, which you can't explain as a piece of fatty tissue, essentially her head, uh, on that headboard, in the area where it was. And I'm, you know, forever grateful to the blood spatter expert that we hired, uh, Ken Martin out of Boston, uh, if he had perceptively picked that up. Uh, the jury would never have heard it. And when expert, you know, I can hire an expert to say the man's made a green cheese, but when you bring an expert in to say that it's, that it's, uh, you know, it's not. I mean, I mean seriously, I, I think, I think whatever that guy said to the jury after that point was a waste. Of it. So before you came out, are, are we? spoke for the first time and he uh, as you can imagine had some choice words for you and, and and basically said the DA doesn't speak for Leslie doesn't speak for my family I got up and spoke for for Leslie um, do you have anything to say no. to the family that no thanks guys and we just saw his family walking outside right. of the courtroom. Hand in hand, looked like Jenna Newlander and, and her brother Ari um, Not going, commenting. going yeah. from the uh, courthouse where the trial was held. Looks like possibly over to the Justice Center or maybe down the street to the car. Hard to right. speculate at this point if they'd even have any contact with their father. And listening um, this to early Bill, I mean, booked. he made a case that it was strong physical evidence mm -hmm. this time around because this is his second time he's been convicted yep. of killing his wife, Leslie in their DeWitt mansion in 2012. And this time around, he said, you cannot dispute the physical evidence. Right, A right. piece of her brain matter on that headboard made the difference. And I don't think you can discount some of the um, other evidence. And, and now, Christy, as we're looking at this live picture of the family, I believe that's his brother, uh, Ovid, in the brown coat there, um, Jenna in the red coat, Ari in the the bluer um, uh, pullover, uh, maybe his son-in-law on the right-hand side there. Anyway, they, they are going over to the, they, they did, day absolutely, one. including yeah. um, Leslie's sister, sister. Um, yes, right. Joanne London, who was the first person to testify, I believe, on the defense's mm -hmm. side there, and she has stood by her brother-in-law uh, this whole time. Right, um, saying that they, they never saw any yeah. indication of, you know, 
violence right. in the marriage right. or, you but, know, never felt that her sister was in danger, mm -hmm. she had said. But, but, but uh, clearly, and I think it's, you can't discount that not only did uh, Bill have new physical evidence that he brought into this trial, but he also did something that he didn't in the first one and really went into their um, family history. Uh, that he talked about a little bit there, uh, that they, they were um, on a trial separation. They were in different parts of that large do it home, that they had each had, I believe, uh, apartments, um, and that there had been other things in their relationship that could have led um, a, a spouse to right. physically harm right. the other. You don't necessarily want to say husband to wife or wife to husband, it could be either, but he didn't go down that road in the first one. Um, he delicately handled it uh, in this one and mm -hmm. felt it was important enough to kind of put that into perspective for the jurors because he knew the playbook was out there from the defense right. um, as the family has stayed together and they're painting the picture of a, a, a bucolic um, family uh, in DeWitt that always got along, had had dinner, I believe it may have been a, um, a Purim dinner the night before this happened in 2012, if I'm getting my dates correctly, maybe. Um, actually, it was in September, so it wouldn't have been Purim. Purim would be in March. September would probably be either Rosh Hashanah or, or Yom Kippur. Right. But anyway, had a family dinner um, just before that. They were all together. That was the picture that they had hoped to paint, that they hoped the jury would believe. But mm -hmm. then there's the physical evidence. Yep. And then you had, and he said, other people are now coming forward right. telling him other things about this former doctor who right. was revered yeah. in the community. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people find it so incredulous because he brought life into the world. Yeah, it's and now, said, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And now yeah. he's convicted for a second time yes. of viciously killing yeah. his and, wife. And, and I mean, uh, very, very Bill Fitz, Fitzpatrick, right, to cite uh, Sir Connor Arthur Doyle, yeah. the, the writer of Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> uh, for some, uh, some classic saying there. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think it was, uh, you know, just classic work. Bill knew he had um, a, a really strong um, playbook there. Um, and if he could just enhance that a little bit, and, and he did in a big way, they could have simply presented essentially the same case, but they went back and they retested yeah. some of those things. And I don't know if there was new um, uh, equipment, new things, but somebody gave some of that bedding that was still there, the bed and what happened in the bed, some of that physical evidence, they gave one look over. And it was a small a piece small of that piece tissue, of, yeah. right? Very right. small piece, but it, it fit into that puzzle and there. And you couldn't explain it no. any other no. way. No, no. absolutely he, not. He yeah. beat her. Right. Yeah. There, were, there were only ever two options in this case, right? right? I mean, right from the get-go, uh, it was only one of two things. It was either a slip and fall in the shower, accident, or if not that, murder. There was no, I got home from a run, she was lying there, did somebody break in, did something happen untoward? I mean, it was really either going to be one or the other. Um, and clearly he did enough. I say he, but uh, Melinda McGonigal is uh, assistant district attorney. His daughter, third chairing on that, and she was um, a law student, I think, in the first uh, trial where she brought in, uh, at that time, what you could say was a uh, key piece of his closer, that, that coffee cup because the oh, family the cup, had yes. made very uh, clear that Leslie never got out of bed without her morning cup of coffee. And what was collected from the bedroom that day was a very hot cup, very warm, let's call it, cup of coffee with not a speck of blood on there. And it was his daughter that noticed that and pointed it out to him. And Another she's, strong and piece of evidence. How, how, yeah. could, how could that have been there the whole time when there was blood spatter on water bottles, on right. lampshades, on... But not on the coffee cup. But not yeah. on the coffee cup. Right. She was a law student then. She's a lawyer now. She's yeah. working with uh, Bill Fitzpatrick. She third chaired that. So um, yeah. I guess congratulations to he and his team. I'm sure there were other people in the office as well. Right. Um, you know, Again, they got this murder conviction twice. Right. Yeah, and for those just joining us, he has been convicted on two charges, mm -hmm. uh, not just murder, but also the uh, tampering with physical evidence, another guilty verdict there. So. 
two charges found guilty for a second time. Um, you remember the first trial back in 2015. Yep. It yep. was, I think, three days of deliberations. Uh, yeah, it was three. I'll call them yeah. full days. I don't remember if they were like, you know, literally 9 to 430. But then it was that fourth morning when they came back. Right. And, I, and I think, you know, it's been kind of uh, staying with me recently, Christy, that it was, um, it was almost to the day, March 17th, when the first trial began in 2015. Mm. So seven years ago, right? Did I do my math right? You seven did. years ago, on this day, the, the, the first trial started. Seven years later, here we are with a second verdict, and again, murder. I believe Andrew Donovan yeah, is standing by live Mr. now. Lines, Andrew, Andrew Donovan. Um, uh, covering really, the trial we, we, have, we have heard Bill Fitzpatrick speak. Um, what was it like when you got into the courtroom, the jury comes in, we know there's a verdict. What is the tension like in the room? Was there any gasps from the family when the verdict was read? Describe the scene to us. Well, it was, you know, we had heard the jury come back in. We had seen the jury come back in earlier today for what's called a readback, where they can request evidence to continue their deliberations. But pretty early on, we knew that when this courtroom door was being unlocked, it was for a much more significant reason. First and foremost, Onondaga County Sheriff's deputies walked in to begin with. So whether or not Robert Newlander was about to be found guilty or not guilty, in the event he'd be guilty, they needed Onondaga County Sheriff deputies to put him in handcuffs and walk him out, which is exactly what happened. So early on, we, we could tell something was different. A lot of people who work in this building, the old Onondaga County Courthouse, somehow knew that this was at a new level because they showed up too. So then once we're in court, you could feel attention. You could see that Jenna Newlander had returned to join her family in, in support as she had for a lot of the trial, but she hadn't most recently. A a and then Ari Newlander was there. And, and I'm just gonna step away because you can see the district attorney's team leaving with evidence they used. You can see the lamp right there that's been referred to so many times. The lamp from Jenna Newlander's, I'm sorry, from from Leslie Newlander's master bedroom. You can see this is happening so in real time right now that the district attorney's team is leaving as we speak with the evidence they've had in and out of this courthouse so many times. And excuse us while we all catch our breath. So you can see Melinda McGonagall, the assistant district attorney who helped prosecute this case now twice, successfully twice. She was actually called to the Newlander residence 10 years ago when this was first uh, ruled an accidental death. So she's seen this through now for 10 years. So, pardon the interruption of the evidence coming through. Back to what it was like the moment that the, the verdict came in. You, you could tell something was different. You could tell the jury had made up their minds. Before the jury is invited back into the room, the judge opened court and said, here's the note I got from the jury, is that there's a verdict. Then the jurors are called in. They very quickly read their verdict guilty. That was the first charge of murder. Then the second charge, tampering with evidence, guilty. Then after that, remember, all 12 jurors need to be in agreement, but only one person, the, the foreman, is speaking. After that, each individual juror is surveyed as to if that is indeed their verdict. Each person, 12 times, then 12 times again, said guilty. There wasn't a huge reaction from the Newlander family sitting right in front of me until Robert Newlander was being taken out of court. They saw him get handcuffs put on, but it wasn't until they were asked to leave the courtroom that they all said, Dad, we love you. Ari Newlander did speak with us. Uh, that is, that's Robert and Leslie's son. He did say to a group of reporters that the district attorney does not speak for his mother. You might remember the district attorney in closing arguments ended his argument saying, we are the people of Onondaga County and we are speaking for Leslie Newlander who needs an advocate when her husband and even her children have abandoned her memory. So a lot of emotion for that family. The district attorney is, is very careful not to rub it in, that, that acknowledging that this family is also a victim of Robert Newlander. So he would not rub it in that either Jenna didn't testify or, or that they're going through now the grief of, of losing their mother to, to, to death 10 years ago and now losing their father really for a second time to a, a conviction. Um, a, a lot to go through, a lot of interviews that I've gathered that, that we'll bring you more of coming up on News Channel 9 at 5 o'clock. Andrew, thank you. Yeah, a lot of emotion there. Um, and, and no reaction at all from Robert Newlander. He didn't speak, he didn't say anything, right? 
I don't know if Andrew, can you hear us? Say that one more time. We're just wondering if you picked up any nuances with Robert Newlander, any kind of emotion on his face. Uh, did he say anything? Did he whisper anything to anyone? You know, not, not that I saw. He um, Obviously, everyone's in masks, so that, that kind of takes away our ability to read lips or pick up on, on whispers. Um, he's been stoic, and I think Jeff, Jeff Kulikowski would agree that in the first trial, he was somewhat stoic. In the second trial, he was similarly stoic. Um, he didn't have comment to, to, to us when we asked if he had anything as he was being taken away in handcuffs. So, so I, I would consider him emotionless, and, and, and you know, psychologists can, can decide why that is. Um, uh, you know, and, and the, the district attorney said something at the end, how could a guy that delivered so many babies, the DA used the words bring life into the world, be now guilty of, of cold-blooded murder and a plot to cover it up? Um, so, uh, you know, there, there, are, there are people more educated than me in, in, in mind reading, and, and, and I'll leave that to them, because from what I saw, what was visible, there was no emotion. Great job covering the trial for us, and we're going to hear much more from Andrew. We'll have reaction and complete coverage coming up on News Channel 9 at 5 o'clock, not that far away. And Jeff, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and putting it in perspective and giving the history of this case and, 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 and kind of filling us in on what happened the first time around and how different it is the second time around. A very swift verdict within mm -hmm. hours of verdict reach it was in the first time it took us several days so um, yeah much more ahead for you on News Channel 9 at 5 o'clock we appreciate you joining us have a great rest of your afternoon